And hello, everyone. Welcome to PMP Live. I'm so excited to be here with you, and I'm so excited that you all joined us today in this new format. Um, today, we're going to have Sam Wedlick here, who is the author and illustrator of a new picture book, Chicken Little, The, to the Real and Totally too True Tale. It is super funny, and it hilariously talks about how panic and fear can get out of control when rumors and unchecked facts uh, get spread without any rhyme or reason. Uh, Sam is a painter and a blogger outside of illustrating her own books. Uh, speaking of drawing, later on, Sam is going to show us how to draw Chicken Little. So be super excited, grab whatever you need, pens, markers, another pen, and some paper, so that you'll be ready later. In just a moment, we're going to begin the event. But before then, if you have any questions for Sam, you can always click the Ask the Question button. It's at the bottom of your screen, and you can always put it there. Uh, please do make sure that your questions are about the author or the book or anything else that we talk about today. Um, always remember to try for kindness in your questions. You can also vote on your favorite questions, and at the end, we'll go through them in the order that they're voted in, more or less. <laughs> you can also buy the book. So there's a button down there, and it'll take you to where you can buy the book right now. Um, the website is having a little bit of a difficulty. It says that we don't have it. Promise you, we do. Um, so don't be scared in pushing the button because it is there. Um, for all the young people that are joining us today, please check with an adult before buying the book. Um, also, don't worry about worrying about your camera or your mic. You can see us. We can't see you. You're fine. Wear your pajamas. Be comfy. Um, thank you again for supporting us and the bookstore. And now let's hear from Sam. Yay. Hi, everyone. I'm Sam Wedlick, author and illustrator of Chicken Little, The Real and Totally True Tale, which also is a fun tongue twister if you try to say it five times fast. Uh, I am so excited to read the book too in just a minute, um, but I wanted to piggyback um, and just shortly introduce the story and this amazing character we have in Chicken Little, who is reimagined as a girl character in this telling. And this is a story, the moral of the traditional folk tale of Chicken Little, if you haven't read it um, or your grown up hasn't read it to you, is don't believe everything you hear. And you might be thinking to yourself, what does that mean? Um, it means to pay attention. It means that not everything you hear from everyone might always be the truth just because they said it. And that's an important thing to know, an important thing to think about in the world that we live in, um, both the world where the story and folktale originally came from, but also for our world. So I wanted to take that idea and tell a story about a chicken who experiences something kind of scary. And what do we do when we're afraid? And how do we handle that fear? And I thought it would be really fun to explore a story where we can talk about those things together. So are you ready? Okay. Here we go. Chicken Little, the real and totally true tale. Who are you calling little? I am not little. I'm petite. Little implies young and small. I am not a baby. Babies are easily scared and I'm not afraid of anything. Bonk. <gasps> what was that? What was it, do you know? I don't know. Is the coast clear? Nothing looks dangerous. Chicken Little looked low. Chicken Little looked high. Nada. There must be a reasonable explanation. It's not like the sky is falling. That's ridiculous. <gasps> or is it? What do we do? 
Hey, Sky, are you falling? Me? No, I am a blanket of gas held by the pull of gravity. I do not fall. Um, that sounds like an excuse. Stuff falls from the sky all the time. Preposterous. Name one thing. Well, meteors, stars, rain, snow, hail. Usually you turn white or gray for that stuff, but who knows what you're capable of? Maybe you could start falling at any time. No, honestly, I'm fine. Chicken Little, what are you doing? Uh, just checking in with the sky to make sure it's not falling. <gasps> what? The sky is falling? Hey, wait, I didn't say, hey everybody, the sky is falling. Back in the barnyard. The sky is falling. Run, run, run. The sky is falling. Run. <sighs> this is clucky chaos. It's utter pandemonium. And I started it, but how do I stop it? The sky is falling. Chicken Little brought in the fact-checking snipes who were widely respected, but the horde of hens wouldn't stop to listen. Chicken Little tried to corral them in the coop so she could explain, but the chickens refused to be caged. We're free range! Run for the hills! Cut the fence! The sky is falling! Things really got out of hand when Chicken Little heard the hens chanting, Cut the fence! Cut the fence! Okay, first, never run with scissors, but more importantly, you can't cut the fence. There are actual predators out there. But, but, but the sky is falling! Oh, that's Poppycock. Didn't anyone tell you not to believe everything you hear? I just got a bonk on the head and was investigating the source. <gasps> a bonk? Ouch, did it hurt? Did she say a bonk? <gasps> oh, 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 you poor dear. We'll need a bandage. Got it, click, 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 click. I've got ice, click, 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 click. Check the pupils for dilation, click, 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 click. Honestly, I'm fine. And she was. See, I told you I wasn't afraid of anything. That is the end. The end. So I hope you enjoyed the reading of Chicken Little and all of its silly jokes. Um, and I hope it was fun to look and think about how we respond when we feel afraid and what we can do. And if we can calm down a little bit and think and investigate, 
we can maybe find out what's really going on. We can talk to our grown-ups, and we can try not to get so caught up in our feelings. And when we do that, we might even be able to share that calm and spread it around the same way that we spread fear. Okay, now I wanted to show you how I draw Chicken Little. And because Chicken Little has so many different feelings in this book, and we all have a lot of feelings. I mean, we're stuck inside. There's a lot going on right now. I think it's really important to feel your feelings. And I think it's fun to show how Chicken can have feelings on her face. And if I show you that, you can learn how to draw feelings on your own faces and characters that you make. So here we go. I'm gonna use some markers and this easel that I have right here. So I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna change my camera a little bit. Okay, here we go. First, I start with a circle shape for chicken's head. And then I add her wings. Chicken wears red cowgirl boots, which are an homage to the fact that I was born and raised in Texas, even though I live in New York right now. So let's start with chicken talking to us. So I made her mouth really big and tall. Her eyebrows are just sort of right over her eyes in a kind of open expression. And now she needs her glasses. I'm gonna add some yellow for her beak. And then I've been using like a light gray in the book uh, for a little extra like feather and shadow detail. I didn't have a light gray marker, so I'm just using this tan color. You should use any color that you have. It doesn't have to be exact match. You can make a purple chicken if you want, or a pink chicken, or a red chicken, or any color that seems fun to you, or you don't even have to draw a chicken at all. A little, I'm gonna do some shading down the bottom of her wing, the bottom of her body, right inside her neck, under this arm, and here. Okay, there, chicken's talking to us. She might be saying, hey guys. All right. All right. Now I'm gonna draw a bunch of faces and then we can explore doing a feelings check with chicken. Big enough? Yeah. So, chicken's head is kind of a squashed circle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you look in the book, you'll see that it changes a little bit from page to page. That's okay. When I was making this book, I learned that the little part at the top of a chicken's head is called a comb. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Now I do. And now you do too. All right, let's see. What are some different feelings that we could be feeling? We could feel sad. I could put a tiny frown into the beak. For sad, we might do eyebrows that are like that, right? Maybe some tears. 
Oh, today I'm sad. But feelings don't stay forever, right? Feelings are changing all the time. Later on, I might feel happy. I like to draw happy eyes, like the kind of eyes you make when you're laughing, like when someone's tickling you or something so funny and you're just like, ha 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 ha. And your eyes kind of close, they crinkle and they get really small. And so when I'm drawing somebody that's really happy or really smiling, I usually draw these little half circles like this one. And two. If I wanted to make her like giggling and laughing, I would do her mouth open. For here, this is more of a, a calm happy. So I'm just gonna put a smile inside of her beak like that. go. And if I had a pink marker, I might come here and put some pink cheeks in. Because sometimes when you're laughing or giggling, your face gets a little bit rosy. All right. What are some other things that we feel sometimes? Sometimes I feel angry. Do you ever feel angry? Like when you're like frustrated, like you try to do something and it doesn't work, try to put a toy together or a Lego set or something. My kids play with magnetiles a lot. Sometimes when you're building something, it just crumbles and falls apart right in your hands. And it can be so frustrating. You have to build it all over again. In that moment, you might feel kind of angry. So let's see what that looks like. When we're mad, our eyebrows usually come down low over our eyes like this. Mm. Jane's angry. Let's do chicken when she's feeling afraid because that happens in our story. When we're afraid, sometimes our eyes get really big and round, <gasps> but we don't know what's coming. In that case, you're gonna wanna draw bigger eyes and you'll make the black circles inside the eyes big too. Those are called the pupil of the eye. scared. Maybe this is when she thinks the sky is falling. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. We'll get her glasses. Oops. That's all right. Normally I would go and fix that, but that's okay. Okay. These are all the feelings that she's feeling. Let's try chicken being kind of silly. What do you think?
<laughs> Here I made her eyes being kind of goofy and rolling toward each other. Do you know how to cross your eyes? I always thought it was kind of funny to do that. Let's put her glasses on nice and big. So as you can see in this drawing, you can show emotion, not just with the face features like we did in the last panel, but you can also show it with body language, right? Because we show how we're feeling in the way that we stand and also the way that we move. You can do that in your drawings as well. I do it all the time when I draw chicken. I use her arms, I mean her wings, um, her feet, and even her comb can be so expressive. When she's feeling scared, it might shoot up straight at the top. If she's feeling sad, it might come down and droop over her face. These are all things that we can do to add even more emotion to what we're drawing. And those emotions communicate how our characters are feeling and they help us to tell stories, just like we tell our own stories with how we're feeling to our family, to our friends, and the people that we know and love. Okay. I don't think I've ever colored her tongue. It would probably be pink if I had a pink marker, but since I limited myself to black, red, yellow, and cream, I'm gonna do it red. And I'm gonna color this in with the black marker. The yellow beak. Oh, you know what I just realized might be fun? If she's really moving and dancing, she might be kicking off some feathers and that's always fun to draw. You can look through Chicken Little if you get a copy and look for the places where there are some, some feathers flying around. I also like to do these little action lines. You'll see these in cartoons and comics a lot. They're just little movement lines to let us know that our character is moving. There we have Silly Chicken. I think she's pretty funny. What do you guys think? Let me bring her a little closer. <laughs> well, I've sure enjoyed showing you how I draw Chicken Little. I hope it was fun and interesting for you to see too. I think it might be kind of a few more things. I'm gonna sit back up here. Oh. and say thanks for watching me draw it's been really fun and I think it could be time for some questions if you guys want to chat hello again thank you so much okay so wait one second <clears throat> let me clear my voice and then let's do some questions Alrighty, so once again, remember that you can ask them. They're gonna be at the bottom of the page and then you can always vote as well so that we know which ones we should really go for. So let me know. Ready? Here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so the first question is gonna be from um, Lynn. Did you have any ideas or characters you liked but weren't able to include in this book? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... I think we ended up simplifying the story into what we felt like was the strongest way to deliver the message, but there were many versions of the story before it came to this place. And in fact, when I first started drawing Chicken Little, it was a little more like a traditional tale that had a wider cast of characters. And I even had other barnyard animals like pigs and cows and I think a dog even, and a duck. There were a lot. Um, and as we kept exploring what we felt like the story was really about, and I kept going back and thinking, what are, what are we really talking about here? It actually felt like the most interesting story was the story that was happening within the chicken flock itself um, to us. So that's where we landed. I love that. It always takes time to find out what you really want to do. Mm -hmm. okay. So this one's also from Lynn. She's going for it. I love it. Everyone else join in. Um, 
what is your favorite page or spread of the book and why is it your favorite? Ooh, oh, okay. I'm going to look in here real quick. I don't have an answer ready for that. Um, hmm, what is my favorite? I think I have two. Okay. Uh, and I'll tell you why. So I love this spread, which happened yeah. right after she's been talking to the sky. And the whole time that she's talking to the sky, she's wearing this very cool astronaut helmet. And, you know, you don't really know if she's gotten in a shuttle to go up there or what's really going on or she's doing like a spacewalk. Um, but then you see on this page that she's just kind of up her little ladder to talk to the sky. Um, and I sort of love the visual joke that happens on that page. And I also love that that's the page where the miscommunication occurs that sets off the rest of the silliness and chaos and panic um, in the story. And then this is my other favorite page. I like all the joke pages. Um, so this is a page where she's trying really hard to get everyone to calm down and not just be in their fear place, but to, to try to start to calm down and listen. And she's got the coop renamed safe house and the chickens are totally, I mean, that chicken's face is hysterical to me. I love it. She's just gone. She's gone. Um, and then them shouting free range. So those are my favorites. <laughs> it's hard to yeah. choose. <laughs> I noticed that while you were reading it, you started laughing at that page. It made my day. Yay. Okay, so then got Michelle, and Michelle wants to know, do you relate to Chicken Little, and are you similar? Mm, I do. I I feel like Chicken Little is probably a combination of me and my kids, and, and seeing them, and especially my four-year-old with the I am not little part. Um, I think that the part of me that most relates to Chicken is me feeling like sometimes my first response to a situation is to get really like emotional and to kind of turn that emotion into this immense tidal wave of emotion and then kind of like storm at whatever the situation is. And it's not the most effective tactic to deal with things. And I, one of the things I've been working on a lot in my life is to try to pause um, and take a moment to breathe and get calm and really think about what's going on and observe it for a second before reacting. Um, and I, th I think that that's the part of chicken that I most relate to is that she, it, we all do that. We all respond um, and then she investigates and I really love that. So. Yeah. I love that it processes so many things like both chicken little and then all the hens. <laughs> um, so this one is, ooh, fancy new question. Um, this one is from Carrie or Kari. Um, uh, she spells her name differently. Anyway, from Karen, um, are any of your characters related to someone you know? Which I think you kind of went over, but is there anyone else that you were thinking about, like in the hen coop or other places? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's probably not one person. You know, I, th I think that I think it's observational, right? I love to watch. I, I live in New York City. One of my favorite things about living there is that I get to people watch all the time and I'm around so many people and I find it endlessly inspiring um, to see all the different ways that people live um, in different cultures and different communities. Um, I think I've also, you know, like all of us have been watching the news and watching how, how all of us are getting informed and being informed and are swayed by different things that we hear. Um, I think that the hens in particular are kind of they're a little bit of an amalgamation of, you know, kind of how I feel some things are happening right now where, where it's easy to get swept up in something. Um, but the thing that turns them and my favorite part of the story is that the little becomes vulnerable and she, she tries as she, she's tried all these different ways to kind of, beat him over the head with the truth or bring these fact checking snipes in and nothing's really working. And, and the thing that finally works is her sharing what actually happened. So she shares her story um, and she shares that she had gotten injured and that she was trying to figure out what's going on. And it inspires the community to come together and to take care of her. Um, and, it, and it all kind of turns on that. And so 
to me, it reminds me of the best parts of our communities where when, when we know that someone's hurting and we know that something's happen, happening and we have an opportunity to help and fix and heal, we do it. We come together and we're going to do what we need to do to, to be strong as a community. So uh, that's my, <laughs> what I hope that's for each. <laughs> You're gonna stand by it. <laughs> okay, um, next one. And thank you for that, by the way. Um, this one's from Hadley and he or she, I don't know which, um, wants to know, how did you make all your pictures? That's a great question. Um, I start my character design process kind of how we did today, sketching in a sketchbook with a pencil um, over and over again. But the actual art for the book was created digitally on an iPad with a pencil because technology is amazing and I'm able to do that. And one of the reasons that I love using an iPad is that you have to do a lot of revising. And if you're a kid that's watching, revising just means doing it over again and making it better every single time. And so you might realize when you're reading the story that one of the characters could be in a slightly better position. Maybe they could move over on the page and that would help the page to tell the story better. Or maybe their facial expression isn't quite communicating what we want it to communicate. Um, and so working digitally allows me to make those adjustments really quickly and easily. Whereas if I were to paint everything by hand, which is beautiful and still done by many authors and illustrators, um, you're repainting the entire spread over and over again. Um, one other thing I wanted to say, which I think is fun and unique about this book, is that this is not typeset. So this is not a font. I hand lettered the whole book. Um, so everything in the book is my handwriting. Um, and that was also a really fun thing to do. So. Yeah. I went on your website earlier, sidetrack, um, and I saw all your lettering and it is so incredible. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Um, so this one is back to Michelle. And what are some of your other favorite folk tales or fairy tales? Ooh, um, I love the tortoise and the hare. I'm actually toyed with doing that one um, first or figuring out how to combine Chicken Little and that story um, because I think it's such a great, a great lesson on, you know, slow and steady doing the work, showing up every day, doing the work or, you know, trying to sprint through life. Um, and I say that because I think I've always been someone who wanted to sprint through life. I'm so impatient. Um, so I, I just relate to that one personally. Um, from just a fantasy and, and fun point of view, when I was a little girl, my mom got me, um, I think it was a Grimm's. I'm pretty sure it's in Grimm's, uh, uh, like a compendium of fairy tales. Um, and I love the one of the, I think it's the seven dancing princesses. I'm not sure the title exactly, but they sort of have this secret place they go to. They can, um, and they have these dancing shoes and there are forests of silver and golden trees. And I just, it, that probably is my first memory of a fairy tale that really transported me to another magical place and was part of me becoming hooked as a reader um, at a really young age. So, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do one more and then we're gonna wrap up. How does okay. that sound? Great. Okay. Oh, I like that one. Okay, so let's do this one right here. Um, it's from, yeah, it's from Natasha. Um, what was the inspiration for writing the story? Yeah, um, we were talking about redoing a folktale. So it was my first, it's my first picture book, uh, like we mentioned. And I actually signed on with Scholastic to work on a different story. And as often happens in publishing, that project did not go forward. And so I had an opportunity to do an author illustrator combination project right off the bat. And it was an amazing opportunity and I was excited about it, but I was also a little bit nervous um, because I hadn't ever done this before and I hadn't come to the table with my own story ready, which is a more traditional publishing route. And so we were sitting, I was sitting with my art director, my editor, my agent and the assistant art director. And we thought, what if we redo a common folk tale um, or a common tale? That way I can play with the story structure that already exists, um, but also have fun with it and kind of learn the ropes of picture book making um, and telling these stories. And I started to tell, we started to all talk about things that we really care about and things that we thought were really important. 
And um, one of the things we kept coming back to was just fear and how much fear can change us and drive us into this state where it becomes really hard to stay calm and it becomes hard to know what to do and very easy to become overwhelmed and just shut down. Um, and so Chicken Little came to mind and we thought it would be a fun story to tell. So, so we did. Um, and that's where, that's how we got this fun chicken who becomes totally panicked and totally afraid um, and finds a way through to pause, get calm, check her facts, investigate, and then share that with her community um, in a fun and, and silly way. And we wanted, I wanted to do it funny because I think when you talk about big feelings, um, especially things that are like fear or panic, humor is the way to carry that story because laughter lets our brains know that things are still safe and okay. Um, and it allows us to process it in a different way. Yeah, I completely agree. Thank you so much for talking and showing us how to draw everything. Um, speaking of drawing, okay, so mine are like this. <laughs> I love them. They're so, so good. Good. <laughs> um, So that's what I made. I want to see what everyone else made that like that is awesome part of this. So we have. For politics pros, we have a handle it is at kids and pros. So look us up, follow us on social media, show us, show us your chickens, and then also show us the expressions that you're feeling right now because everyone's feeling so many things. So just show us what you're doing. Um, also, you can click the buy the book button one more time, just letting you know that. And once again, it does say that it is out of stock. That is untrue. We do have it, so don't worry about that and don't let that stop you. Um, for all the young people, again, once again, please do ask your parents. And I think that's about everything. The only thing else that I have for you right now is one last question for you, Sam. What are you doing with your kids right now before we all sign out of here? We, we are reading lots of books. We are playing a lot together. And our favorite thing lately has been to get outside um, in nature. We love to go on hikes and play and observe birds and trees. It's you know right on the cusp of summer here in New York. And as somebody who's living with all four seasons, it is a time of great celebration after you've been inside for winter for so long and then also inside for quarantine. <laughs> um, it feels extra special to get to enjoy the season and be outside with the kids right now, so. Yes, it's like we lost spring, so now we have to celebrate double. Okay. okay. Thank you all for joining us and have a lovely day. Goodbye, all.